So, yeah, so I, I, I'll start off. I appreciate, uh, you know, the understanding, the late notice today with the, with the Zoom. Um, obviously, with the heightened COVID protocol and the, the league and the shift to, to Zoom today is, is a part of uh, my, my, uh, my morning usual Monday routine. And unfortunately, uh, this morning it came back at, that I was uh, positive for COVID. So um, I will not be in the building. Uh, this is something that for, for us, uh, it's a reminder to all of us, you know, to be extremely cautious and to, to understand where we're at. Um, we've seen it obviously with other teams, uh, in the league and society in general. So we're, we're, we're working through all that. Um, you know, in OTAs, we kind of went through this, uh, before where I was out. So, um, you know, I know our, our group of coaches and players are extremely resilient and, um, for, for us, um, moving forward, you know, we're going to have a, a good plan put in place and, um, and all different plans put in place. So I just, again, I appreciate y'all's understanding for that. And I wanted to, uh, to start off with that. Other than that, you know, in, re in regards to the game, uh, nothing changed from what we discussed last night. Uh, the, after watching the tape, when you turn the ball over, um, you know, on the other side of the, of the field for them, it's, it's something that uh, against that team, they're going to make you pay. And they did that. So you know, we got to, we have to fix it. We got to learn from it. And, uh, and, and that's the only thing we can do. And our guys will do that. So I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. All right. First question, Pat Finley. Hey Matt, uh, are you feeling symptomatic? Uh, did you have any reason to think that you would test positive today? And is there anybody else players or staff who has tested positive since yesterday? No, I feel pretty good. I think, uh, um, you know, again, you come in in the morning and it's, it's, it's something where every, every morning, uh, on Monday, you come in and, and you're following protocol. And it's what we do. And so uh, when I got the, the call this morning from our head trainer, Andre Tucker, you know, it's uh, you try to be prepared. Uh, so now that, that's there's um, as of now, no, you know, we're, we're uh, still working through, I think, so, some of the team. But uh, that's a good sign for sure. And and now we just uh, we got to make sure that we. We do everything that we're supposed to do here um, in, in regards to the, po the protocol. Dan Weeder, Matt, who takes the uh, steering wheel in your absence? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll have uh, um, Coach Tabor. We'll go ahead and, and uh, run, run any of the, the team meetings that, that I would not be a part of. Um, and that's, again, what we did in OTAs. Uh, that, that'll, um, you know, allow Bill and, and Sean to really, you know, stay focused um, with, with their size, but at the same point in time, that's, we, we always, we created a plan, Dan, um, two years ago when we started this thing, we have a, we have a role for every coach, uh, and the roles that if we, if we don't have a coach in who, who steps in. And so that would be, uh, how, that's how we'll go moving forward. Kevin Fishbane. Hey Matt, I, I know we obviously talked about, uh, the vaccination situation a lot over the summer. Uh, I'm wondering if there have been, uh, further conversations with the team, um, with any of the guys who are kind of last holdouts after this, made a bit of a wake up call um, for what's gone on uh, this past you know week or two. Yeah, we have not had any um, you know those discussions as a as a team in general. If that's what you're asking, I know you know when you go through these situations, it, it definitely um, for for different reasons, it's it makes everybody understand where where we're at and how things can go, and really how the protocol works too. Um, if you have the vac vaccination versus if you don't, so. We'll get together and, um, you know, the, the, the best part for that or the, the, the part that I really believe and, and uh, understand is, is having the support staff that we have in, in these times that we showed at last year's, you know, being able to pull together and, and, and get through times like this. Okay, what are the solutions? How do we get through this? How do we get better? What, you know, listening to what the league says and then, and then us continuing to follow through with that as well. Um, so it'll, it'll definitely, um, be something that we we look into and continue to to discuss and and uh, but we have not had any of those team discussions as you're asking hub hey matt i'm sorry to hear about the test i hope it passes quick for you um, yeah thanks hub obviously unfortunately we got to get to the football part too though and we know what happened yesterday um as you try now and work through this with these extra handicaps um what is the communication with justin where are you guys at right now in terms of how much of this is systemic and how much of this is the young quarterback just not growing fast enough well i would, I would i'll start with with the 
the last comment of not growing fast enough, I don't, I, I would say that I don't agree with that. I think that hub he's, he's done a really good job at, at growing. He really has. And when you watch the tape last night, you know, the result of not scoring points and having turnovers and um, with, with what happened in that game, um, it, it can certainly feel, feel that way for a lot of different reasons. But when you watch it, you see that there's a, there's a lot more to it that goes into it. And, and we're all involved in that. And so, um, you know, he's, he's growing. And we knew that when we, when we named him the starter, I think we all knew that there's going to be growing pains. That's what every single rookie quarterback that's ever played in the history of this game that has happened. And so is, is I think important for us to understand uh, learning how to do things as an NFL quarterback. And, and some of these times that we have, whether good or bad, he's going to use those to continue to make him a, a hell of a quarterback in this league for a long time. That's the exciting part for, for everybody. And, and so um, we just know around him that we want to do everything we can to, to as a rookie who hasn't seen as many defenses or, or had as many snaps as some people that have played in that game yesterday or some coaches that have coached, we need to make sure that we're always doing everything we can to give him the greatest opportunity to succeed. And that's what we're going to do. And uh, you guys all know what, what type of resiliency Justin has and what type of resiliency our team has. And when you have that, um, when you have bad losses like yesterday and you have a bad loss like Cleveland, you got to make sure that you uh, you fix it. And, and that's the opportunity, the chance that we get to get back on track here against San Francisco. And, and, and it starts with scoring more points. Mark Potash. Hey, Matt. Uh, hope you're feeling better. Mark. Um, Thank you, Mark. You mentioned yesterday after the game about how close this team has become, I guess, over the weekend or whatever. And, and your belief in this team is admirable. But I'm wondering, why, why should Bears fans believe that that kind of thing will make a difference? Because... At this point in time, with all due respect, for everything we've heard about the closeness and the culture, the belief and the coaching staff, it just – four years in, it just doesn't seem to be paying off. It just – from the outside, it seems to ring hollow. And I'm, I'm wondering, do you kind of get that that difference, that disparity? No, I do. I, I, absol- I, I, abs- I absolutely get that. I, I 100% understand that. And, and I think that's where um, – when you go through – and we were able to do, but so – um, you know, getting to the playoffs and, and winning the division. What a great start. And and so um, I, I understand completely and we all understand because just as everybody is is um, wants to win and score points and hold teams to, to less points, um, we all want that, too. And so it, it comes down to us doing it. We got to do it and we got to we got to perform and put the points on the board so that you can win games. And, um, you know, that's that's our number one focus right now is being able to understand, OK, yeah, we talk about an identity and we talk about trying to do certain things and run certain plays. Team, We need to score a lot more points. And however we do that, it doesn't, you know, whatever it is, we got to We got to score more points so we can win. And uh, if, if we all have that same mindset uh, at fixing it, then we got to do it. Sorry, coach. Looks like you're cutting off there. Uh, Adam Hogue. Yeah, I'll go ahead, Matt. Um, I actually have two questions, if that's okay. The first is um, COVID-related. Just getting home yesterday, um, how did the players that tested positive or ended up on the COVID list, did they come home with the team yesterday? And I guess what was that whole procedure like? And then football-related question, on the first play of the game, it looked like Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney blocked the same player and left another player unblocked who ended up making the play. Since that first play of the game, they usually know is coming and – responsibilities are relatively well known. I guess just how frustrating was that to have that happen after you took the ball at the coin toss and you're trying to score first? Yeah. So the, the first part of your question in regards to the, the one, the people that were on the, the COVID that they, they, that was separate. They did not come home with us. Um, they were separate. And then um, to the, to the first play, you know, we had a, uh, a little toss crunch play there where you're able to go ahead and take advantage of, of, uh, of the defensive end. And, um, you know, sometimes if you have a certain alignment, um, where you, where you start, um, then that can affect basically how they line up and where you go and, and, and can mess with some of your rules. So you're right on that play. Uh, we had an issue to right there. I think those are the little details we all got to lock in and make sure. And, um, and, and, our guys know that our coaches know that. And we take that very pers- personally. And so 
um, like you said, we, we get the ball and we end up going three and out. That's, that's not the plan. And it can start with the very first play. Um, you know, the, the, the second play, we ended up getting some pressure on the weak side and, and we get the, the sack and the fumble. And then all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, third and 14. And that's not realistic. That's, that's not good football, um, especially to be able to put, uh, you know, your, your, your quarterback in, regardless if you're a rookie or not, third and 14. That starts. Sorry, Coach. Sounds like you're breaking up again. You, you still got us? We'll, we'll take a couple more here. Um, let's try again, Adam Johns. I wanted to follow up on uh, what Mark was asking about with the, the team closeness and whatnot, because you mentioned it last night. You mentioned the 24 to 48 hours. Did, did something happen in, in that time frame, like a, a team meeting, players only meeting to that, that sparked your comment? I'm just curious if you could take us through uh, your belief there. Uh, what it was, was, you know, big picture. I think sometimes as a, as a coach, you got to have kind of a feel and a pulse as to, where your guys are at, you know, that's, that's what I, that's what I need to do is, is say, okay, Hey, you know, heading into this game that we're heading into and we, you know, you got a couple things that are going on and it's just every now and then you got to pull together and you just got to have a, a, a good talk with the guys where it's open and you just, it, it's everybody, you know? And so we always have a, a team meeting um, every Saturday night at the hotel, right? We always have that. That's, that's before um, really after our meetings and then before we, we shut it down for the night for the next day. And so um, I just thought it was a good opportunity right there just to kind of, um, you know, speak from the heart a little bit from where, where, uh, where I'm at as the head coach and where we're at as a team and, and where we want to go. And I think that's very important to do that is to have those every once in a while. You can't have those every week, but sometimes you got to have some that are, um, you know, real conversations that, that mean a lot. And, and that's what we did. That's, that's all that was. So I think when the question was asked last night, I think the question was something about, are you concerned after this type of loss of losing your locker room, losing your team? That's why I responded the way I did is I'm not because I know the feedback that I got after that, after that talk. And, and it, that to, to have that feedback from your players feels good. And we have time for one more, Dan. Matt, I wanted to ask you about uh, Justin's first and third interceptions, if I can. The, the first one, uh, yep. the, the 12 men on the field confusion, couldn't quite pick it up on the, the review. I wondered if you got any more clarity on that. And then on the third one, obviously, anything notable there that caused that to be underthrown the way it was? Yeah, so the first one, the first one, what happens is, is um, you have a scenario where uh, you, you, ha you have a scenario where uh, he, he, he had the 12 men, like he said, where we have a code where we can say fire, fire, and you, you end up, you know, you end up trying to snap the ball and you get guys on the field. And so we were, we were, um, you know, he snapped the ball. And after they didn't have the 12 guys on the field, then what we did is he dropped back and he kind of got hit and then he scrambled. And then we got into scramble mode. And, um, you know, for, for, for him to understand in that, in that moment right there, sometimes, you know, again, we, we worked the scramble drill all week. We've been working it with him and for him to understand, Hey, right then and there, he thought he was trying to hit a Rob on it. And, uh, and, and they just, they just didn't connect right there. And the kid made a good play and, and they got the interception. So there's, there's again, stuff that um, when you go through these, like, like the, the week before, right. We had the one where the neutral zone where we didn't get that. So you have two similar situations where you try to take advantage of the defense. And last week's was, you know, we tried to take advantage. We didn't get it. This week's was there, there, there wasn't 12 men on the field, right. As, as he snapped it. And so that's the communication process among us as coaches and him as the player as to that, that part. And then once you get that part down, now it's extending the play and, and, you know, essentially, um, you get to a point where you, you, you just, you know, you throw the ball away or, 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 you know, you, you run or something. And so those are learning tools for him. The, the last one was, you know, we're backed up. We had just got one yard. We're backed up. And now we called a, uh, a, a go route um, with a Rob and him. So he was able to, uh, uh, he took a nice three-step drop. He stayed in time and on rhythm and he put the ball up and the DB was off a little bit. So when a Rob was running to him, it's, sometimes that's going to be one where you throw it up and a Rob's just going to kind of like jump over top of him and make a great catch. Um, and, or the guy's pressed and normally it's downfield more. And that one was the one that was a little gray. So I would say like the more 
like when those two guys get together and start watching that exact situation, that play, that route versus that defense, they'll fix that and they'll they'll be able to um, to to make sure that that doesn't happen. In worst case, it would be an, uh, an incompletion. So um, those are probably Dan some 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 of the stuff that uh, you know that that we're going through that we need to make sure. Okay, hey, um, you know are we doing everything we can as coaches and are they doing everything they can as players? And that's where we got to just say, okay, is it, is it best for us to do that? Or we got to try something else, you know, uh, Herb Howard coach. I'm, I'm sure within that locker room, you guys still feel like all of your goals are ahead of you, but you've now faced three of the elite teams in this conference with the Rams, the Packers, the Bucks, you guys got the Cardinals coming in later and you haven't fared well against either of those teams, what gives you guys confidence going forward that you'll be able to compete with those teams, even if you are able to earn a playoff spot similar to the way you did last year? Yeah, no, that's a real question. I mean, we, we get that. And that, see, that's, that was, uh, you know, for us as we go through this, um, when you go through this part of the season right now, when, you know, we're, we're, we're three and four, and we got two more games coming up here before we get to, to the bye and can get a little healthier too, which, which would be great. I think the bye hits us at a great time. But these are these games right now, um, regardless of who we're playing, like you said, those those NFC teams um, we, we've struggled with. And and so we understand that um, for us right now, we got we got to win. And when you win, it builds that confidence. And, and then really, too, um, it allows these guys to to get back to what we had during that those two games that we won against uh, Vegas and Detroit of really feeling good no matter who you're playing you know, you feel great going into it and, and you come out with the win. So we're going to have to, we got to build to that, I guess, is my answer. We got to build to it. It's not going to happen by saying, Oh yeah, well, we can just kind of get to it and then hope, hope it happens. No, we got to play a real, you know, a, a team right now uh, in San Fran that is going to come with everything that they got. We got to come and bring our best at home and we got to get back on track. We get back on track and get that, that one win and then go ahead and take it to the next one. Um, that momentum is, is great. And what I'd love to see is I'd love to see a nice win streak. You know, we, we've uh, a couple of years ago, we went through that four game losing streak last year. We go through a six game losing streak. And I think that's what what we're all feeling right now. We feel that. And then you feel the, the, the lack of scoring. Um, we feel that. So let's get back to scoring. Let's get back to playing as a team. Let's get back to winning and let's do it consistently against any team that we play because they're all good in the NFL. It doesn't matter. They're all good. Right. So if we do that and and we fight through this adversity, we fight through this tough stuff, we fight through it, um, then 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 we can give ourselves a reason to say, hey, man, we're going to we're going to get better and we're going to do all this together. And, and then and then everybody's happy. You know, but we got to get to that. All right. I think that's it, coach. Thanks for joining us. Pre appreciate everyone's flexibility this morning. Yeah. Thanks for the flexibility. I appreciate you all. Take care. Thank you.